I'm trying to create something interesting and, and I am trying to deal with, with, the, with the questions I have for life. And since I am not um, using text and I am primarily a painter, I, I try to compose images that talk about things that matter to me. So I meet the archetypes this way, and, and by meeting the archetypes I go back to my own heritage, the ancient Greek myths that have somehow transmitted archetypical myths to the whole universe. I, I like to arrange things in a way to encourage a dreamlike atmosphere. I don't know if I succeed, but this is, this is the territory where I would like to um, communicate with others. I'm not going for the myth. I'm not going for the poetics necessarily, but I'm trying to explore um, uh, a universe that is beyond realism, so I enter this kind of subconscious uh, fusion fantasy. I have a genius friend, Angelos Mendis. He always comes and sees what I'm about to do. I ask him what am I doing, and he tells me what he thinks, and then he goes away for two weeks and comes back with a title. He proposed ink, and I accepted it enthusiastically because it is the extract from the octopus, and it is a, a, an extract like a primal um, element like a black sperm that you take from an animal and then you can use it to write or to paint, which means that you, in an alchemistic gesture, you take the carnal and you transform it into a spiritual. It's, it's also a, bit, a little bit Darwinian as well. It's like... Um, uh, fr fr from, from the water, the, the, the little frog that becomes an ape and then becomes a human and then becomes um, uh, a human of the universe. Um, basic things that are in my head and, and I, I play with them all the time. I think it's the clash of generations. I think those two people with this obvious generational gap, I think they, they talk about father and son, they talk about um, ancestor and uh, um, the one who inherits, they, they talk about Kronos and his children. In the production that was interrupted uh, from um, the pandemic, I was already obsessed with the idea of succession, of father and son, this, this kind of, of relationship. Uh, so it, it was transmitted to this unexpected project as well. I, it, it's never easy for, for me as a creator to say what it is about and what was the starting point. Um, everything I try to explain is just surrounding. I know that I started with something very tender in my heart and I found darkness. As I, as, I was, as I was working, what came out of me was uh, darkness and horror of desire, in a way. You know, wh when I cast, I cast for something that I haven't done yet. And I also don't know what I want. The only thing I know is that I have uh, uh, a certain limitation on a budget, and this means a certain number of people. So I set out to, to look for interesting, interesting 
people. And of course they have to move well and I, I have to be intrigued when I watch them. I think I have a wonderful cast for the next work. It was the first time that I had an international audition and I, uh, Shuka uh, Horn is, is the youngest one I, I picked. Brianna I knew. I was very happy that she expressed the will to, to continue the collaboration. And uh, Damiano I knew as a dancer. I was very happy that he came to the audition. But then I discovered Suka, and also I discovered young uh, Molimer that I, I knew I knew him, but I hadn't seen him dancing. And, and I have two Lukas. And then uh, I have two of my favorite collaborators, Michal Steofanus with whom we did uh, Primal Matter, Primera Materia, and uh, Christos Trinopoulos, who is the one, uh, the protagonist of The Great Tamer. This period of self-reflection taught me is to, but this is personal, I, I re reorientated myself with my desires within the work. And I don't know if it is opening a new door or not, but uh, I'm, I'm always the last to know. I, I do something and then I watch it, I throw it and then I watch it, how it goes and then I understand something about me. Uh, but as in the process of throwing it, I'm the last one to really know.